Okay, so I just decided to restart this tutorial from the beginning. So we're gonna be painting this cute little deer today. Now I did decide to go ahead and use some masking fluid. I don't normally go in with masking fluid and mask out my white areas. I'll go ahead and use some gouache. And I do have some white gouache over here on the side in case I need to add some in at the end. But I thought it might be fun to just play around with some masking fluid. So I tried to get some little textures in the ear here and then just some little fur textures around the outside of him and where these little white spots are. And we're just gonna see how that looks. Now, the first thing I wanna do is just start mixing up my background colors. And I should have all of the supplies listed down in the description below. So I'm just gonna get a fairly watery mixture going on. And I do have the reference photo down in the description. And then I have the line art available for my Patreon members. So that's available for my lowest tier. And I'm just going to grab my size 10 silver black velvet brush here. And I'm thinking a bit of a pinky mauve like background. And I think that's going to complement our deer a little bit. So I'm going to start grabbing this permanent rose. And... Actually, I'm just going to get my swatch chart art. So I always um, try to have my swatch chart available in front of me so I can let you guys know exactly what colors I'm using. So this is Permanent Rose. And these are the Winsor & Newton Professionals. But use whatever watercolors you have. And I used the Cotman for a really long time. I'm going to grab some of this Winsor Violet as well and mix this in. And I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of blue, blue too, I think maybe some Windsor blue. And I feel like that's sort of the color that I want, maybe a little bit more permanent rose. Something like that, but I feel like I might wanna add a little bit more water to it. So I'm just gonna add some water to this mix here. And I'm just gonna add this mixture in. So the reason I want a pretty watery mixture here for the background is because this paper dries fairly quickly. So if I try to go in with just, um, and I'm just grabbing a little bit more permanent rose and a little bit more Windsor blue, um, so if I try to go in with just uh, not as watery of a mixture, it's going to dry really quickly and then our colors aren't going to blend as nicely. So just keep that in mind. So I'm just grabbing these two colors until I get sort of like the color that I'm looking for. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab just the dioxazine violet and get this over here. And you know what, maybe I'll use some dioxazine violet and I'm gonna go in with that Windsor blue and get sort of like a purpley blue violet color going on. I want it to be just a little bit darker than the top color, but I still want the two colors to be close enough that they're gonna transition nicely together. So we'll see how that looks. And I'm just gonna rinse that out and I'm going to grab my three quarter flat brush and this is what I'm going to use to just start wetting the background. So I've got a jar for dirty water and a jar for clean water. So I'm just getting into the clean water and I'm really going to take my time to wet the paper here. Now this is 100% cotton paper. So the water is going to, you know, go seep into the paper a little bit more. If you're not using 100% cotton paper, then it's going to dry even faster than this. But I find this Academy paper dries pretty quickly compared to like Arches or Paul Rubens. Um, even the Strathmore paper, I think, stays wet a little bit longer than this paper does. So just keep that in mind. And I'm just trying to get up to the edge of the deer, but if I don't get quite up to the edge of the deer right now, that's okay. Because once we start getting our colors down onto the background, we can fix that. So I'd rather not quite go up to the edge than go over too much. Because I find on this paper, some watercolors can be a little bit more difficult to lift as well. 
And of course it depends what watercolors you're using too, cause some brands lift a little bit better than others. So I just wanna make sure I'm getting all of this nice and wet, but I don't want seeping puddles of water on the paper either. So I'm just really gonna take my time going over the paper and you can skip ahead a little bit in this step if you just wanna like see the painting part, but it is really important to take the time to wet your paper really well especially for backgrounds if you want like a nice wet on wet background and you want a really nice transition then you really want to make sure you're taking the time to wet your paper good and i like to use a flat brush but if all you have is a round brush then use that just use whatever you have I just find this one allows me to get up to edges really nicely, but you know, your round brush would probably do that as well. Okay. And before I start going in the background, I'm just gonna double check that I am recording because you never know. And I'm just gonna grab a little piece of paper towel and I'll use this to just blot any areas if I feel like I've gone over like into the ear here a little bit. I'll just blot that up. Then I'm going to grab my size 10 silver black velvet and just start putting my background colors in. So I might even want to add just a little bit more permanent rose to this just to make it a little bit more pinky. Kind of like that. And then I'm just going to start putting this color in at the top. And I want to be fairly quick with this because like I said this paper does dry but because we're using a more watery mixture that's going to give us a little extra time too but also be aware that the more water that you have in your mixture the lighter that that color is gonna dry as well but I don't want a very dark color because I don't want the background to compete with our deer either so I don't want to have too dark of color. And there, if I go over, I just dab that up. So I always seem to have a piece of paper towel in my hand while I'm painting because it's just very useful. So I'm getting this about three quarters of the way down, maybe halfway down doesn't have to be perfect or anything. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more of that like concentrated towards the bottom here. Then I'm gonna start grabbing that darker bluish purple color and start getting this in. And again, if I go over, I'm just going to dab that up. And I'm gonna start at the pink color and bring it down because I want where it's nice and wet right now, I want them to really transition. And I'm just letting the, the water pool onto the paper at this point, but we're gonna have to get rid of some of that because as it dries, that's gonna cause blooms for us. But right now, because I want to help this paper stay wet, I don't mind that. And it is buckling a little bit, but that's okay because once I dry it, it is going to dry completely flat, especially where I'm using a block. So now's the time where I want to push these colors right up to where I put that masking fluid on. And hopefully that's going to help us get a little bit of like fur texture on the edges. And I'm just going to dab my brush off to the side here and just push the color where I need it. And then I'm just going to go in and just dab up any areas where I can see the color is starting to puddle. So I've just got a cloth off to the side here and I'm just dabbing my brush off onto it and just picking up any paint. You could always do that on your um, paper towel as well, but I tend to just do it on my cloth here. So I'm just going in and just picking up any puddles that I can see. So 
So just dabbing. And because the paper hasn't started to really dry yet, it's not going to cause any blooming or anything yet, but we want to, you know, get it dealt with before it starts that stage. That's just going to give us a nice light background. And I'm just going to kind of just help these colors transition a little bit right here in the middle because I don't want such a like stark straight line. I want them to sort of blend and transition. And I might add just a little bit more dark color down here, but I want to be very careful again. I don't want to be leaving a lot of water. So I'm just going to go right along the edge here and just pick it up. But I want to be careful not to pick up too much because I don't want to leave a white edge. Okay. And again, I'm just going around these edges. Now this is more common on a block that you're gonna have to go around the edges because where the glue sort of builds up here, um, then that can kind of catch the, the watercolor. And as we start drying this, this wet watercolor is gonna bloom out into the other areas. So I think that's looking pretty good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And I'm going to set this palette off to the side and I just used a separate palette because I want it really watery washes and then this will save this other palette for me to do the other painting in the deer and I'm just going to go ahead and start drying now one thing when it comes to drying your paper a lot of people say that their paper will still stay buckled once it's dried and it never dries completely flat and if that's happening to you, then your paper's not completely dry because if it's completely dry, it will dry down flat. So what I do is I'll dry it and then I'll touch it. And if it's still a little bit cool or damp to touch, then it's not completely dry. So just keep that in mind. And especially blocks, they will dry and they will dry flatter faster. But if you're taping your paper down, you still should be able to dry it down flat enough. So just keep that in mind. And I move my hair dryer around, well this is actually a heat tool, but I move it around the whole paper. So I don't just dry one area and move to another area, I move it around the whole paper. And I think that helps to dry each area like at the same time kind of thing, because everything's sort of drying together. And that's gonna decrease the amount of blooming that I'm gonna get. And it's also gonna decrease the amount of buckling that I'm gonna get because one area doesn't dry down flat and another area is up causing a buckle. So I hope that makes sense for you guys. Now you can see down here where it was still just a tiny little bit wet and so just a little bit of it came back, but I don't mind that. That sort of just gives some texture to the background. So again, I'm just really taking my time, really letting it dry good. And then I'm just going to just touch it and make sure it's all completely dry. Now it will buckle a little bit right here because this is a block and that's the spot where it's not glued down. So just be aware of that, but the rest of it has dried completely flat. So we're gonna start on our little deer here. And I think I'm gonna start with the ears and then we'll probably do the body and then the face. So I want to get a little bit of water on my palette and I'm going to start mixing up some colors. And I'm thinking I'm going to take a little bit of that like purpley um, mauvey color that we had mixed up. Just a little bit of that, maybe a little bit more permanent rose mixed in to make it a little bit more pinky. So I can see sort of like a peachy pink tone in the ears. So I'm gonna get that and I think I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt sienna in there as well, just to get it a little bit more peachy toned like that. And then I'm just going to grab any more off the palette here and just add a little bit more if I just need a little bit more color. But this is gonna sort of be the color for the ears. So I'm just adding those three colors until I get something close to what I want. 
And I think that's pretty close there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my size eight silver black velvet, just because I've got the paint on this brush already. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wet the ear. And I don't need a lot of water to be on there, but I just want enough so that it's gonna give me time to play with the paint a little bit. Now I'm gonna avoid this dark area that's right in here, but I'm gonna cover the rest of the ear. And I'm going right over that masking fluid and I'm just gonna wet this ear too while I'm at it. Now again, I'm dabbing off and then just picking up any excess water because I don't want puddles on it. I just want enough so that the, the color is gonna flow a little bit. So then I'm gonna grab that pinky mixture that we mixed up and I'm gonna drop this right into the ear and I'm gonna cover the whole ear. And I'm trying to make sure I'm going right up to the edges. Now I do have a little bit of masking fluid on there and I just went over the edge a tiny bit. So again, just taking my paper towel and fixing that and then just picking up anywhere where there's like extra of it. And then I'm just gonna go in and fill this ear in. This is just a really nice soft color for the inside of the ear. And I wanna make sure I'm getting all in that masking fluid and I'm not really sure how the masking fluid's gonna look in the ear because I don't usually do hair like that, but you know, it's fun to sometimes experiment and try new things and just see, see how it turns out. You never know until you try it. So I'm just picking up any extra paint because I don't want this puddling or anything. Then I'm gonna grab a little bit of sepia now I want this to be a little bit drier, a lot drier than that one. And I'm just gonna mix a little bit of that color into the sepia. This is just a very dark, dark brown. And I'm gonna start getting this around the outside of the ear and where I can see a little bit more of the brown, I'm going to drop a little bit more of that in but I can see it's sort of like all around the edges of the ear. Okay, and I'm gonna get a little bit more on this side. And because we have less water on our brush now, like we have more paint, more pigment, it's not going to like bleed out as much. So that's why I wanted a lot less water compared to the other mixture. And then I'm just gonna let that bleed and dry like that. Might even add maybe just a touch of like neutral tint, just into a couple little areas here and honestly I don't think it's a little bit more dark in the reference photo but I think I like more like this soft brown so I don't even know if I'm going to add that in I think I'm going to leave it like that and just let that soften and do its thing and then I just notice here I've gone over just a little bit but that's okay just tap it right up Okay, so now I wanna mix some colors for the body here. And I'm thinking I'm going to mix up a watery layer and I'm just gonna lay down a very light layer. So I'm gonna put some water down here just so I have enough. And then I'm just gonna mix up a couple other colors. So I'm just gonna put a couple of dabs there. 
And I really like these pipettes because they're they're really easy to get in and pick up some water and put it on your palette. So I use those a lot for that. I'm going to grab this yellow ochre. Now my yellow ochre is very much on the yellow side, as it would suggest, but some are a little bit more like neutral, um, a little bit more like tan colored. So that's sort of a color that I'm going for. So I'm going to add in a little bit of sepia just to kind of like tone down that yellow a little bit. Just a tiny bit and I want it to be like very watery too. Okay, then I'm going to grab some burnt sienna and I'm going to mix this up. And I want this to be less watery. So I'm really just trying to grab from the paint side. And then I'm going to do the same with the sepia. And actually, I might even for this one, I think I want it to be even less watery. So I'm just going to grab from what's on my brush there because we're already gonna have that base layer of color down. If I go in with too watery of paint, it's going to kind of spread out. So I'm gonna grab this yellow ochre mixture that we've got, and I'm gonna start putting this in and just seeing what the color looks like, and I quite like that. I just want to make sure that I'm using enough water with it. And I'm just going to go over, so I'm just dipping into the water just to keep it nice and light as well and to keep it pretty wet. And I'm going over all of this area here. And I'm trying to get up to the edges. I'm going to go back in and just make sure this stays nice and wet enough so it gives us some time to kind of play with some color down here. I want to make sure I'm going right up to the edge of everything. Okay, so then I'm going to grab this um, sepia mixture. And I just want to try. Now this might be a little too wet. It might bleed a little bit. Yeah, so I'm going to have to wait a little bit on that one. Because it is going to bleed a little too much. So I'm going to grab the burnt sienna. And get this mixed up. Because I want a little bit of like darker color in there, but... I don't want it to bleed too, too much. So I'm going to start with this burnt sienna and just start getting this in. Now I did put a little bit of masking fluid on these lighter white areas, but I'm going to try to go around them and I'm just filling in this area with the burnt sienna color right now. So I'm just getting this color in, and if I miss a few areas, that's totally fine. And I'm just going to try to get it up, and I'm just doing like swipey motions, like so if I miss some areas or get some texture in there, it's going to look like maybe some hair or some fur, like it was intentional. And I'm just going to bring a few little flicks up and out like that. And then I'm going to dab this off and go in with our sepia. And I'm going to mix it in with that burnt sienna, get a little bit warmer sepia color. And I'm going to start putting this in here now. So again, I'm just doing flicks. I'm just getting some texture. So you want to like look at the way that the hair is going too. 
And I don't want to paint every individual hair. I sort of want this to be a little bit looser, but I want there to be some texture going on. So I'm still using my size 10 brush here because it's a little bit bigger. And it's going to be a little less controlled, which is sort of what I'm going for right now. And I'm just going to start bringing this color down here and just very loosely. They can be big strokes, they can be little strokes, whatever you want, but I just want to loosely bring a little bit of this in. And I'm going to add just a little bit more burnt sienna. Now I'm not dipping back into my water because I want this to be drier. And where I can see it's the darkest area, I want to get just a little bit more in. And then I'm just going to blend this up with some of this other hair. And just kind of let that fade out, rinse that off, dab that brush off really well so it's pretty dry. I'm going to grab this sepia again, just go a little bit darker, a little bit more concentrated. And then I want to go right under the little chin here. And I might even have a little bit too much water on there, so I'm just going to dab off a little bit of water. And then just get just a few little concentrated, like darker hairs going. But because this is quite concentrated now, it's not going to blend out as much as that previous layer that we just put on. And it's just going to build up a little bit more texture. So I'm just bringing it, so some going this way, just following that, that hair, and then some starting to go the other way. I'm just going to bring a few down into here where it's still a little bit darker. So I'm just picking up from that darker mixture, just doing a couple little flicks. And this is going to soften out nicely. But again, I don't want to, you know, focus on every little tiny thing. I just want it to be nice and soft. Then I'm going to grab even more concentrated And I just want to get a couple little, that might be a little too much. Just a couple right under. In the middle here, but I don't want to go too, too dark either. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse that out. And I can see a little bit lighter value just coming along here. So I'm just going to just dry brush in a tiny little bit, lift a tiny little bit. I'm just going to soften just a little bit on this side here. So I think I'm going to leave this because I'm at that stage where I want to fiddle with it. And I don't want to put too, too much detail in there. So I think I'm going to leave that and let that dry. And then we'll start on his little face. So I'm pretty much going to do the same thing. So I'm going to fill his face in with our lighter value here. And I want to make sure I'm getting enough water. And I'm just going to fill everything in. And 
And one of my goals this year is to paint a little bit looser because I like to do a lot of detailed work and a lot of detailed painting. But I feel like I need to improve with my looser painting. So that's one of my goals for using watercolor. Because I use a lot of other mediums where if I want a very detailed painting, you know, I can do that with colored pencils or I can do that with pastels. So I feel like this year I want, um, and we got some of that purpley background color in there and we'll just mix that in. <laughs> So I'm just bringing this color down. Across the nose there, picking more up. So that's one of my goals. So we'll see how this turns out. I'm going to bring this color across the bottom of the mouth, but I'm going to get just very watery down here because I don't necessarily want this to be super dark, but just a little bit. And then if I notice there's any areas of it puddling, I'm just going to pick it up, but I want to keep the area pretty wet. And you can see how this really holds the color because it doesn't really lift some of that background color off, but that's okay because it just sort of places our little deer in the background. So I'm gonna start getting in some of the darker values. So I'm using that burnt sienna mixture and I just pulled a tiny little bit of the uh, yellow ochre mixture and I'm gonna start getting this in. Around the eyes, sort of down this way. If you notice that it's spreading just a little bit too much, just dry your brush off and just pick it up. just like that and maybe go a little bit more concentrated with that. So I just wanna look at the shadow areas really. Right now, and get those areas in. So I'm just getting around the nose, but I want to make sure I'm leaving some lighter areas and I'm just going to dab off a lot of that paint on there. And actually I might rinse that right out, dab off a lot of the water. And I just want to have a very light value in a couple of these places, making sure we're keeping just a little bit of lightness. Then I'm going to take some sepia and mix that in with the burnt sienna. Get sort of like a chocolatey brown color. I'm going to start getting this in. So just in the darker area, so I can see it quite dark in here, just on top of the face. Kind of comes down around the nose. 
a little bit over the nose, but there is a slightly light area. So this is quite concentrated, so hopefully it's not gonna move around too much on us. I wanna bring just a little bit down on either side of his little nose here. A little bit under the eye. Bring a little bit down around the nose. grab just a little bit more burnt sienna and just get this up in here and I'm just trying to keep the area a little bit wet as well so that I can just keep mixing and pulling colors and actually i need to bring this up a little bit so i'm just taking this color off i'm going to mix up a little bit of this sepia color I'm going to get this just around the nose so it sort of comes in like this and goes out. So I just want an ever so slightly darker value there. And I'm just going to dab off some of this and just, just pull this color just up and around a little bit. Dab that off, grab some more burnt sienna. So I feel like I just need to warm up in here. And I think all of this side of the face needs to be a little bit darker. And I'm just going to dab that off and sort of just dry brush a tiny bit. Just over here, just a very light, light value of this. Okay, and I might need to darken this up a little bit, but I sort of want to let it 
dry a little bit without going in too much up here. Might add just a touch of darkness right in the middle. So adding just a little bit more sepia, just sort of right in the middle here. Just little tiny strokes. And again, I'm just watching the direction that they're going. Just grabbing a little bit of burnt sienna. And then I'm sort of just going to do the same with that. Okay. And again, I'm going to grab some sepia and I want this to be pretty concentrated. And I'm going to start under here in the little mouth area. And I'm still using my size 10 brush. And I'm just creating just little tiny, like little fur like marks. And then I'm just going to dab quite a bit of that out of there and just start just dry brushing it down. So I'm just pulling that pigment down. And again, I'll wipe even more off. And so it gets a little lighter. And I think maybe just take a little bit off that side. Okay. Now this has dried down a lot, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this area dry right now. But I think I wanna go back over and just glaze some more color in. So what I might actually do is just give this a good dry, and then we can just go back in, glaze some color in, and then we can do our nose and eyes and any last little details that we want. Because I want this to be a little bit more brighter down here. but I'm liking some of that little like hair texture that I'm getting. I just want sort of that, that under layer to be a little bit darker, a little bit brighter. Okay. So that's good. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of water. And I sort of like to stand up and look down at my artwork because I'm always looking at it this way. So I find if you can kind of look down at it, then it gives you a little bit more better perspective. And so I'm gonna go and mix up some more burnt sienna. Oops, just burnt sienna. And I think I'm going to mix up maybe a little bit more yellow ochre because I think I want this to be a little bit more on the yellow side. So I'll try glazing with that color and just see how that goes. So I'm just going to grab this, get it a little bit watery and I want it to be a little bit brighter so that's why I didn't use the one down there. And I'm just going to add water and just lightly glaze over everything so it's 
dry, so it should stay put. I just want to brighten everything up just a little bit. And then if I need to go in and just lighten like the edge here, I can do that. Like where the light would be hitting and I can take just a little bit here as well. And I'm going to grab that burnt sienna. And just sort of get these two colors to mix. I need just a little bit more water. And I'm just going to bring this color over everything, I think. Now, I don't want to scrub too much. And especially depending what paper you're using, your colors could lift a little bit better. I like this paper because I find the colors stay on the paper a little bit easier and it's a little harder to lift them. So it's really great if you like doing animals and you like doing like glazes like this. And this works really well. Just want to get some nice rich color. Just going to bring this color up slightly here. And just grabbing that yellow ochre color. something like that and then I feel like I need to glaze a little bit more of the yellow ochre and the sienna the burnt sienna so I'm going to grab that the yellow ochre up here and get this in I'm just going to cover everything, I think, with this color. Because I feel like this value needs to be a little bit darker. careful here. I don't want to bring too much dark down and I want the color to sort of blend in. I'm going to take a little bit of this color and just make sure that all of these areas up here are covered. I'm going to go in with that burnt sienna again. A little bit watery. Just start getting this in anywhere where I feel like it needs to just warm up a little bit. And I'm just going to lift a tiny little bit of pigment just 
above the ears and just up here or above the eyes I guess that would be <laughs> and then just just a tiny bit in here just creating a, a little bit of texture not a whole lot because I don't want to take a lot of that pigment away that we just put down I'm going to grab this sepia color And I'm just going to take quite a bit of this off and just sort of dry brush a little bit of texture just above the nose here. Maybe get it a little bit more concentrated so I can just see a little bit of marks going on. Okay. So I want to get some of the color in the eyes and I'm going to go down to my size 8 brush and I'm going to grab this Burnt Sienna color and I'm going to get this down in the bottom little highlight area and if I go over a little bit, no big deal because this is going to be our sepia, our darker color. I can just see a hint of like this light color down here and I'm going to put some down here as well now I did mask out the white areas if you didn't then just go ahead and make sure you leave them white I'm going to grab a little bit of watered down yellow ochre and maybe a hint of the sepia. I'm gonna get this in the corners of the eyes here because it's not quite white, but it's not quite, mm, it's a little bit darker maybe, so maybe I'll grab a little bit more sepia. Like that. And I'm going to grab just a little bit of this Windsor Blue because that's sort of the color that we used in the background. And I'm going to get this watered down. I'm going to use this in the little top part of the nose and uh, just dab off any extra water if I need it. And then I'm getting it in the little highlight areas underneath the nostrils as well. You can go just a tiny bit darker maybe. Okay. And then I'm going to go underneath the mouth and I'm going to take a little bit of neutral tint. Because I don't want to go completely black, but I want this to be pretty dark, pretty concentrated. And I'm going to bring it right under his little nose here. And then I'm just going to create a little bit of like hair coming off from this.
So I can see it coming down a little bit more like in the, the middle area. And I'm gonna take that neutral tint, a little bit of sepia, and just start filling in the nose. I have to add a little bit of water to it. Just dabbing in, just getting just a tiny bit more water. And I'm just gonna let that dry for now because that's gonna mix in with the blue and we can always cover the blue. And now that the eyes are dry, I'm gonna go in with a very concentrated sepia mixture. Just enough water so that it's gonna flow. And I'm gonna cover the eyes in with this color. Now I'm still using my size eight brush here, but if you need to go down to a smaller size brush to do this, then you can do that. And I'm just going around that first little area that we put down. Oops wrong one that's all right just gonna go in and do the other eye too And then I'm going to go back to the nose because that's starting to dry. I'm going to get some more of that neutral tint. And I'm going to mix a little bit of sepia into it. And it's going to make a very dark, like almost black color. Whoops, we got, <laughs> we got some of that yellow ochre in there. So I am just going to dab that up and just go back in and grab some neutral tint and some sepia. And this is going to make a very dark, dark color. Now you could go in with just black if you want. 
and I'm still using this size 8 silver black velvet. And I'm just going to go around his little nostrils where I can see it dark. Just doing some little tiny hairs off to the side of it. And I'm going to fill in the nose area. Where I want it to be nice and dark. And then just sort of like start stippling it up into towards the blue and I can see a little bit of that texture here. And if I need to just dab some off, if it's a little bit too, too pigmented, then I can do that. And just start blending the, the colors together a little bit. So I can see a little bit of stippling within this blue, but you still see that like blue undertone highlight color. And I'm just gonna do the same in here. Just give a little bit more textured look within the nose. I'm just gonna bring this up onto here a little bit just where I can see it, just just a tiny bit. Just bringing it down just a little bit more towards his little chinny chin. And I'm just going to dab even more of that off. And I can see just a hint of it sort of just like that. And I want to be very careful with this color because it is pretty pigmented. So I'm going to take just about everything off and just just in the darkest areas just ever so slightly. And I really really want like hardly anything on this. So I'm just trying to help shape him, but I don't want to bring the the dark too much out onto the sides, just like ever, ever so slightly. And so this is just some dot dry brushing, and it's just going to help create a little bit of texture. Okay. 
And I don't know if I want to put any up into the ears because I kind of like how soft they look, but I almost feel like it could go a little bit darker in the ears, but I'm going to go ahead and just do his little eyelashes and around his eyes. So I'm going to grab this size two silver black velvet brush and I'm going to grab this really, really dark mixture and I want to make sure I have enough water on my brush so it's going to flow. but not too much that it's going to be a little hard to control. So this has a really fine point. If your brush doesn't have a fine point, you can always go down to like a liner brush. And I'm just going to start filling in the darkest little areas around his eyes. And there's a slight little line that just comes down from his eyes here. down just a little too much so I'm just going to dab that up there Okay, and then we're just going to do some little eyelashes. So we want to make sure that a couple of them flick up and then they're going to start to flick down. So it's going to like flick up like this and then they're going to sort of flick down. So something like that. And I want to make sure I have enough water just so that it's going to flow. And I just do very quick little motions because I want them to be pretty soft. I'm going to do the same on this side. Now you might have to turn your paper. I find one side's always a little easier than the other. So if you need to like, you know, turn your paper around so that you can get a better angle, then certainly do that. Okay, so then I'm just going to go in a little bit of this burnt sienna and just wash that down just a little bit. I feel like that's just a little bit too bright and maybe I'll just glaze over it with a little bit of the sepia.
needs to tone it down a little bit maybe and we can uh, go back over that. And I'm going to get a little bit of this yellow ochre, a little bit burnt sienna, and I'm going to fill in the nostril area, maybe a little bit more burnt sienna. Just trying to get like a light brown color. There we go. Just going to fill these nostrils in. And I might do another little light wash on the ears. So I'm going to grab that size eight. I'm going to get this pinky color going again. Add a little bit permanent rose to it. Add some burnt sienna. Hmm, I don't know that. <laughs> All right. Just to get that tone that I'm looking for again. And I'm going to grab my size 8 Princeton Neptune brush. And what I'm going to do is get this just with some clean water on it. And then I'm going to dab that water off. So it's a very damp brush. And I'm going to put this color in the middle area here. And then, oh, I've got a little bit in the background. Then I'm gonna take that damp brush and just soften it around the sides. So because it's damp, it's not gonna put water into our mix. So we're not gonna get any like blooming or pooling, but it's just going to, um, soften that edge out so it blends in nicely. And I'm just dropping a little bit of that in. And then softening that out. And then I'm going to rinse that off, dab it off really well, go back in with that mixture and do the same thing on the other ear. Because I feel like now that we've got some of our other values in the rest of our deer. I feel like the ears need to be just a little bit darker. Okay, so I like that. And then I'm just going to grab this burnt sienna. Nope, this is sepia. <laughs> There's too many colors on the go. I'm going to get a little bit of sepia and just fill in this area here. Now I did put a couple of little stripes of masking fluid just to try to keep a little bit of white area, but Okay, so now I'm just going to take one last little step back, look at it, and just decide if there's anything that I want to change. And I think the only thing I want to do is I just want to bring the dark out just a little bit on that side because I just feel like it looks just slightly wonky there so I'm just trying to mix up a bit of a darker color and I'm just going to try to just 
bring that out a little bit. And maybe just bring it up a touch. Okay, and I feel like I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and dry this, and then we're going to take off the masking fluid, and then just see sort of where everything looks. Oh, actually, I want it to glaze over these eyes just a little bit since I feel like they're just a little too... Right, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this sepia color, and I do want it fairly water watered down, and just lightly. Just glaze over those. So I'm just trying to drop in some brown just to get sort of the, the right look that I'm going for. And I think that's better. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dry. And I want to make sure that my paper is thoroughly dry before I take the masking fluid off. And you want to make sure that your masking fluid is completely dry before you start painting as well. Otherwise, that's going to either lift the masking fluid once you start painting. And if your paper's not completely dry when you start taking it off, then it's going to cause, you know, it to tear the paper and do all kinds of things. So again, I'm just checking to make sure that all the masking fluid's off. And I like to use this little like rubber thing that I got to remove the masking fluid, but you can always use your finger or just a face cloth, whatever you have. Obviously you hopefully have your finger, <laughs> but I find this does a really good job. And I used the Winsor & Newton masking fluid for this. And I find that's one of the only masking fluids that I've never had rip my paper. And I've left it on my papers for, gosh, over a week, maybe up to two weeks at a time. And this has never, ever ripped my paper. So it's definitely hands down my favorite. And the one that I like to use the most is the Winsor & Newton Yellow Tinted Masking Fluid. And I like that one just because it's a little bit more like tinted yellow so you can see exactly where it is and i want to see how this looks now i think i might have to glaze over some of these white areas because i feel like they're just a little too white compared to some of the other areas i kind of like the white areas on his body though but i could have did maybe a little bit more And I'm just going to double check to make sure I didn't miss any um, because you will feel it like under your fingers if you missed any of the masking fluid. All right. And I think what I want to do is just get a little bit of this yellow ochre maybe a little bit of the burnt sienna and just sort of glaze over some of these areas so they're not so white white compared to the rest of the painting. Especially here, I think I'll have to go a lot darker. Get some burnt sienna.
And again, grab some of that yellow ochre. I might go a little bit with this darker brown and just just break up some of this white here. And then I guess I'm just dry brushing it on as well because I kind of like that color over this. Um, that kind of looks nice. So I'm just using whatever's on my brush. And I'm, I'm not sure if I completely like the masking fluid. I'm going to grab that blue. You know what, I might even try that pinky color that we have in the ear and get this in, in some of these areas. Yeah, I kind of like that as the uh, highlight color on the nose. So yeah, that's what I'm going to go with instead of that blue because I did a little bit more of a pinky purple color in the background. So I kind of like that. And then I sort of want to soften out some of these. So what I'm going to do is just get some clean water. I'm going to grab a clean Kleenex and I'm just going to see if I can just soften around some of these. So I just want to just tone them down a little bit. Maybe even just Like, just see if I can move that paint a little bit. And this paint is like pretty stuck on this paper, so that's kind of hard to do. So I'm just gonna try to get a little bit of that color throughout there. And I don't hate the, the look in the ears, actually. I just think maybe I would have gone a little bit thinner. So maybe I would use a different brush or something. But I don't hate it. Okay. up a little bit of this because it's just very very stark white and it's not all completely white back in just a little bit with this and just fix up around any of these highlights. I might make the nostrils just a little bit darker. Okay, and just dabbing that color off. Actually, I feel like right here could be darker. So I'm gonna grab that sepia and neutral tint and just sort of try to shape that nose back in. 
I think I went over a little bit too much with the masking film. And then I'm just gonna create just a few little hairs off of it on either side. And I think this is where I want to leave it because I'm really at that fiddly stage and I just want to leave it sort of like nice and loose-ish. Okay. So I'm just going to take one last step back and sort of just look at it. And I think that's how I like it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm just going to sort of bring it up a little bit closer so you can kind of see. And that's how our little deer is looking. So I'm kind of happy with that. And I tried, you know, a few different things. I wanted to try the masking fluid. I wanted to try to paint a little bit looser to stop really looking at all that fur detail and just look at the values. And I think I like how it turned out. I mean you know, for just trying something new. So let me know if you want to see more loose paintings like this, or if you like the more detailed paintings, then let me know because I sort of like doing both, but I always like to try something new as well. If you guys made it this far, then make sure to subscribe, hit that like button and hit the notification bell so you know when I post more videos. And thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.